Hello there guys, welcome back to another episode of Grassroots to Greatness with Perugia over in Serie A, Italy. My life has it been a roller coaster of an opening couple of weeks. Here's how we've got on. Following the opening day draw with Verona, we travelled to AC Milan, who managed to beat us by two goals to nil. Fully deserved for them, they were a far better team. Luckily in the second half, we managed to uh, sort of hold off the onslaught, but uh, they were a very, very strong outfit. This one was a bit harsh on us, we lost 1-0 at home to Torino, a penalty uh, to Torino was given and they scored it. Was it deserved? Not really, I don't think it was a penalty, but as you can see it was a bit of a tasty affair, plenty of bookings all round and in the end I suppose we couldn't really complain massively about the result. We then made it three defeats in a row despite Zach Clough getting his first goal for the club. Fiorentina were far better than we were, fully deserved the win and we were just pulled apart throughout the entire game and we were lucky to only lose 3-1 in the end. Harsh words had to be spoken, to be honest, after that game. And we bounced back with our first win of the season, a 5-0 win over Sassuolo. And it was two goals for Clough, one for Rizzo, an own goal. And new loan signing Adama Traore got on the score sheet as well. We were fantastic in this game, a real good, solid performance. And it set us up for a bit of a confidence boost. We then travelled to Atlanta and beat them by two goals to one. Diego Capel and Giuseppe Rizzo with the goals. Uh, Traore picked up a knock in that game and had to come off on 40 minutes. But we maintained our momentum and we were fantastic throughout the game. Uh, I, was, I must admit I was a little bit concerned coming towards the end as we seem to be starting to sort of tire a little bit. But we managed to hold on and it was a fantastic win. Cagliari were up next and... They've got Gomez playing for them, interestingly. He scored a late equaliser in the 92nd minute. Uh, as you can see, Ibrahima Mbaye got sent off in that game and Robin Van Persie got his first goal for the club. It was a great header from Van Persie uh, to give us the lead on 40 minutes, but we just couldn't hold on and it finished one apiece. In a game that we really could have and should have won quite handsomely, to be fair, we dominated Genoa, but we just could not find the back of the net in that game. In the end, a disappointing 0-0 draw. Then I think we went on and shocked the entire world <laughs> by beating Roma by three goals to one at home. Uh, Ishmael Bakioko, I gave him a start and his pace just destroyed Roma's defence. They could not cope with him and uh, he set us off on the road to a 3-1 win and a fantastic performance all round. And last time out, we lost 3-2 away at Chievo. Uh, Traore and Clough with the goals for us. In the end, it was it was probably a fair result. I mean, we started really well and then they just suckered us in like a 14 minute spell where they hit three goals and we just never recovered but uh, I think in if I'm if I looked at it as a neutral it was probably a fair result come the end of the game so that's how things have gone guys not bad at all considering the start we had and that win over Roma was absolutely superb I was really pleased with that you can see we've got kits now as well. They're last season's kits because nobody seems to have made them yet for this year for the Serie B that I could find but We've got them there anyway, so that's cool. That's I'm happy with that. In terms of monetary reasons, we're still seven million in the red, but that will improve massively throughout the season uh, as money comes in, and I am very confident we'll finish in the plus. No bother. A couple of suspensions going into this game today. Well, in two days' time against Inter, we've got Mbaye missing and Cazola missing, which is two big misses for our team. And Giuseppe Rizzo looks set to miss out. He's not exactly naffed, but he's not near full fitness, so we're going to have to tinker with the squad a little bit on that front. But apart from that, I've been very pleased with the way we've played. Um, we've settled down a lot now. As I touched on in the uh, little package there of the results, Adama Traore has joined us on loan from Aston Villa um, and he's been great since coming in. He's really helped balance the team going forwards and added that pace um, and sort of drive and determination going forwards. Caused his opposition defenders a hell of a lot of problems and has got us on got us on path to wins in quite a few games now. So I'm really pleased with that. He's been fantastic. 
Um, also, guys, I just want to say thank you. The the uh, support has gone massive, uh, gone up massively lately uh, in these videos, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you to everybody who's doing that, and the comments are getting more frequent and stuff. So that's really cool. I really appreciate that as well. And um, just a shout out as well. If you haven't had a chance to go over to FM Scout and check out the YouTube channel over there, because I'm doing a lot of work over there with a few other guys, uh, the FM Hub, Full Time FM, uh, Dave has a party, and uh, there's a new guy who's joined today. Is it JNO United? I think his name is. He's going to be putting some stuff on there as well, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's enough touting for now. Let's get back down to business, shall we? I thought today it would be pretty cool if we went and had a little look and seeing how our um, our old clubs are getting on. So we'll start off with an Eaton Griff. Now, their league is no longer active, but that oh my god, that is a woeful picture of the Pingle Stadium. I don't like that at all. That is not very nice at all. But uh, their squad's gone now, but they're still in the Midlands Football League. They're not going to do much. Um, as we get towards the end of the series, I probably will reopen that, um, that sort of level of football back up again. And we'll kind of go through and, and take it from there. But I can imagine us... I can imagine us going back there. Nantwich, who are now managed by David Holdsworth, are in the Vanarama North. Or Vanarama North. I know it's Vanarama. I say Vanarama. It's a piss take. People are getting pissy about it when I was saying it on another video. And if you can't tell it's a piss take, then... I feel sorry for you, my friend. But uh, they're doing all right. They're 13th in the lead. They're going strong. Obviously, we never had the greatest of times there, but I still like to see them do well. We didn't... Oh, wow. Shaw Lane. Check these bad boys out. Shaw Lane. <laughs> Shaw Lane Aquaforce are in the Varnarama North. That is amazing. Fair play to them. I tip my hat to them. If I was wearing one, I would anyway. That is absolutely superb for them. Is there anybody else of Darlington are making a comeback? Sol Salford are up there. Uh, I wonder if there's anybody in the Varnarama, Varnarama South. Or Varnarama. Nothing majorly out. My goodness, Cheltenham have dropped. Nothing majorly out of the blue. So those are those two guys. Was it? You know what? I can't even remember where we went from there. Lincoln, then Crew, wasn't it? That was it. Lincoln, then Crew. I knew that really. I was testing you guys more than anything. So how are Lincoln getting on? No, that's the man who plays for Bayern Munich. Um, they're tenth in the Varnarama League. Rufus Brevet still doing a great job there. Uh, they've got Solomon Kulabai. Woucher. That is one hell of a signing. That is a superb signing. And he's contracted to them as well. My goodness. He's broken Lincoln's record for the fastest goal scoring after 12 seconds against Halifax. Fair play to him. He's been on trial at Port Vale and Barnet as well. So they've done well to pick him up. Well done to them. That is a massive signing for them. Absolutely massive. It'll be interesting to see how they get on. They're up there and they seem to be doing quite well. We then went to my beloved crew who just missed out on the playoffs last season. And they're sat in fifth at the minute under the tutelage of Stuart Pierce. So they're doing really well. And they're doing really, really well. So that's good to see. I'm really pleased because it's a bit of a heart wrencher to leave them. They're in fifth place, 27 points, not far off the playoffs. Charlton top in the league is our good friend, Mr. Samson Emmanuel. Scoring goals. That's the question. He is. He's played four games, got two goals. So he's doing, he's starting at least. At least he's getting involved now. They're using him, which is very, very good. I would try and bring him in, but I can't see. It's not going to happen now. Uh, maybe January. I may have another look and may try and, you know, bring him over to Italy. But I don't know. It might not go according to plan and as for St Mirren let's have a look this does not bode well for them they are bottom they are rock bottom and that'll teach them for sacking me for no reason <laughs> that'll teach them right in the face because I 
I, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I believe we'd have been we'd have been up here if we were in charge. We'd have been probably where party car. Uh, yeah, party. For some reason, I thought I thought I said Patrick then, but I never said party. Patrick Thistle, third in the league. That's where we'd have been, I reckon. We'd have been up there with them. And that is a shame to see. Alan Johnson's just ruining all the good work we did last season. Let's see, transfer-wise, if they've got rid of it. Yeah, obviously, we picked up Bakayoko. But no, they've not really changed the squad massively, so they should be doing a lot better than what they are. A lot of lone players have come in. But yeah, so that's them. So that's the little roundup, guys, of our former clubs. Interesting little news things just popped up. Ricky Lambert is the new manager of Cardiff City. So that's an interesting one for you. That's a bit crazy. Fair play to him, I hope he does well. So we've got a nice easy run coming in of two games here of Inter Milan at home and Juve away. Easy six points out of those, I'd imagine. <laughs> um, excuse me, sorry. I've I've been suffering with like a, a throat thing for a while now and it just continuously makes... Not burps. It's like kind of like I get tr a wind trapped in my throat, and I, I have to sort of stutter away to try and get it out. So I apologise for that. Um, but I have changed systems, and I'm working on a system that I was having a little look around at tactics and stuff on the internet um, because I, I wanted to see what other sort of styles there are, and there are quite a few of these four two three ones with this sort of strange looking formation here so i have gone with that for now and i'm working with this and there was another formation i was oh no it's on my uh ferguson one uh cleon uh, off twitter did a really good um article about possession and he put a tactic on there like a four one two three formation and uh i've been sort of training my team to do that as well uh, to see if we can't just dominate you know possession but so that's going to be for a different series but what i do is uh, at home we play attacking away we play counter and it's basically based off the jürgen klopp uh, tactics that you can find around very similar to those i had a look at those and i basically built it myself and just tweaked a few little things in and out myself but uh, you can download those if you want to have a look at them um from fm scout uh, you can go on there and have a look at those that they are pretty decent formations and it has seen a very good upturn in our fortunes since using it. it's made us a lot harder to beat but we'll just do the quick pick for now uh why are you out of the team oh you're away playing with the under 21s aren't you that's why uh so can you play can you come in we'll put you on the bench and bakioko is also on the bench that club's going to start today david lazafami is in zapata's in okay i'm happy with that uh on a little side note uh prieto has been performing very well lately i've been really impressed with you probably going to cock right up now but he's been really impressive uh recently as has uh ibanez from Chelsea he's also kicked on with his performances Mourinho had a bit of a bitch at me because he wasn't playing like every game and I said to Mourinho yeah but he's not been that great so why should I play him every game if he's not going to be you know if he's not playing well enough and Mourinho was like yeah fair enough but then I put it back in and it seemed to kick him up the arse because he really kicked on then and started playing really really well so that's a bit of a bonus for us right there but today we're up against an absolute monster of a machine in Inter Milan and they've got some amazing players. Apra Apra is a very decent player. Juan Jesus. And they've got Mamana, who's a great defender. A lot of us know about him. Uh, Dzeko up top. <laughs> My former keeper, Al Habzi, on the bench. So they, they've got a hell of a lot of players. Guy Medell. John Obi Mikel's there as well. Lavezzi is there. Lavisi. 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 See, I can't say it. I got I got absolutely hammered because I said Lavisi uh, on FM Scout and I got fucking hammered for it. And uh, it's because of the way my, my accent is and my, the way I talk. I can't help it. So I have to try and remember now it's Lavisi. 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 So in your face, picky little piss ants. <laughs> I'm only joking. It didn't offend me at all, to be honest. 
we all say we all have those things where people say things differently he was like uh is it hedera at hydera at uh, newcastle i always used to say his name wrong i still do to be fair no, i've got a feat I, i'm not expecting much from this game if i'm honest because it's into milan we all know how good they are on fm in domestic league so oh go on <laughs> of all the people for it to break to there you didn't really want it to go to the 35 year old zapata or however old he is did you really he wasn't really going to bomb off down the pitch with it could have done with treore picking it up there or somebody like that but unfortunately it was not meant to be and seth dewitt he's got another book in that's the only trouble with these guys they they are very um kick first ask questions later kind of people if they were uh, if they were cops they would shoot you in the face before they got a chance to question you they're that kind of bunch <laughs> we're a bit, <laughs> a bit fucking crazy to be fair ac milano winning against atlanta i'm not too worried about not winning this game you know if we lose this game we lose it's it's kind of i'm more concerned about picking up points against teams below us and around us that's my main focus you know and then anything we could pick up against the the, the bigger teams like um napoli roma juventus inter ac you know and the other big teams that are our flock you know fiorentina and all those guys anything we could pick up against them is just an added bonus to be honest but uh, so far so good in this game we've, we've we've held our own that was poor from Capel. go on Miglior Miglior Smits to Dewitt there's a patter my god it's just like a sea of yellow in the names of our team come on oh brilliant ball come on Traore oh dang oh dear on the break oh he's all on his own great save by smith so great save from smith well done that man right let's have a little look see here what we've got fabinho or fabino even get on that pitch and uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. van percy can come on and then we're just going to leave it just for a little bit longer. And then we're going to bring on Baki Yoko and see if he's, his pace can't unsettle them at the back a little bit. He seems to link up very well with Van Persie. Um, they, they seem to have a very good understanding together. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, well recovered Smits because he was off down here, wasn't he? And then he managed to get back over there. Go on, Fabino. We'll hover over there. And get ready to bring on Bakayoko. Another booking for another player. We don't have to get some serious bookings. I don't mind. I mean, we, we are a physical team. We, you know, we don't let teams bully us, which I like. So, it's all good. It's all good. We'll bring off Clough. Who's been, for me, Clough's been alright, you know. He's not been too bad. I was a bit worried when he first came over that he would struggle. But uh, he's picked up a few goals. Oh, what a save. Double s Oh. Oh, man. He had to score. That was... Oh, that was heartbreaking. Two great saves. He just couldn't recover for the third one. Good free kick. Great save there. <laughs> one with his legs there, but it, look, he just couldn't... If he'd have kicked his leg in the air, he'd have probably saved it. But... Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. It's Van Persie. Send it in again, Robin. Oh, poor. Poor ball. Expect better quality of a ball in for, than that. Still, we've, we've done all right, haven't we? We've not been massively disgraced. Smith's coming out. He think Smith. Oh, go on, Bakioko. Go! Ishmael Bakioko get in you little beauty used his pace to perfection there great ball from Belmonte those idiots waving their arms around one touch to control and then slots it in brilliant stuff from Bakioko well done young man what a find he was on a free from Tottenham at St Mirren 
what a find. AC Milan are absolutely dismantling Atlanta at 4 0. Or Atalanta, sorry, not Atlanta. Oh, I thought Ibanez were going to give that a good wallop then. But here they come, Malcolm to Keita. Oh dear, two. Oh. Picked us apart just a bit too easily there, didn't they? Great ball from Malcolm. But look at that, poor defending. Just leaving these two guys over here all on their own. What the hell was that from Smiths? <laughs> oh my god. Joshua Smiths is a load of shit. <laughs> He has some games where he's brilliant, and then other games he just twats around like a right idiot. But I think we've done... I mean, I know they've had a hell of a lot of shots and stuff, but I think we've done okay. Oh. I was hoping for a last-minute equaliser there. That would have been beautiful. They deserve that, but I don't think... We, we didn't do too badly, in my opinion, there. It wasn't like no, you you tell him Tardioli, you tell him. It wasn't ideal, but it wasn't that bad. So I can live with that. I, I really can live with that. We're twelfth in the league, you know, we're clocking along nicely. So I'm happy with that. AC Milan totally walloped Atalanta up by five goals to nil. Juve beating Liverono earlier on in the day by three goals to one. And like I say, that means we sit in twelfth position. That's not too bad, 15 points. Only a few points off the uh, the top six. But then again, only a few points off the bottom three or four. So, it's anybody's guess where we could finish. Roma not having a great season so far, neither are Napoli. But uh, the rest of the table is very much as you probably expect it, really. But anyway, guys, for this episode now, that is going to be it for today. If you're enjoying this series, please drop a like down below. And uh, if you're new to the channel, of course, drop a subscribe and check out my other stuff. Much appreciated. Big potato heart in your face. And uh, as always, guys, I'm going to sign off by telling you it's been an absolute pleasure being in your face. Bye-bye.